C-SPAN's local content vehicles are traveling the country, visiting communities and congressional districts as we look at some of the most closely contested House races leading up to this November's midterm elections. The second congressional district in Virginia is in the far southeast corner of the state. It takes in Virginia Beach, which is the largest city in Virginia, and parts of Norfolk, Virginia, and Hampton, and also an area known as the Eastern Shore, which is basically a couple of rural counties. It's primarily farming and tourism areas. The second district uh, has some manufacturing, but its dominant industries uh, are the United States Navy and tourism. Uh, on the ocean front, there's a very vibrant tourism community with hotels. It's not as large as, say, Myrtle Beach, but it is that type of a community. That's a, a source of income. But the U.S. Navy and related military enterprises is uh, its largest business, I would say, and probably for this region. This particular congressional race is of high interest to the Republicans and to the Democrats. When Gwen Nye was first elected, even or certainly during his first campaign, the Republicans tried very hard to keep Thelma Drake in office, and obviously they weren't successful. Since his election, he's been subject to a steady stream of blogs, emails, uh, aimed not at him, but at reaching out to the public or media, blasting almost everything he does. Because he's a freshman, a uh, legislative expert will tell you that the best time to unseat an, an, an incumbent is during the first term, because they haven't quite established themselves yet. So they see him as vulnerable. The Republicans want to take back the U.S. House of Representatives. This is one of those districts where they see they could have a, uh, an end to do that. I'm left with two clear impressions during this process from my experience in the field, and that's one, I am absolutely confident in the capabilities of both our, our military forces and our civilian forces to successfully run a counterinsurgency program in Afghanistan. Uh, but my, my other impression is I'm left with a very serious concern about the fact that uh, our success here is largely dependent on what happens on the other side of the border in Pakistan, where our civilian, um, to, to a large extent, and our, and our military forces are not really present. In this year's congressional election, Gwen Nye, the incumbent, is seeking his second term. He's facing Scott Ridgell, a Republican, who has been active in the Republican Party, but this is his first time running for office. He is a um, self-made multimillionaire who owns car dealerships in the region. The third candidate is Kenny Golden, is an independent candidate who uh, has a, a long career in the military and is also making his first bid for elected office. Gwen Nye, who, who before he, who is a native of the area, he grew up in Norfolk, which is part of the district, and he has spent early part of his adult life in the Foreign Service, working overseas uh, before coming home to run for Congress. When he took office, the Democrats in, are in control of the House. They gave him choice spots on the House Armed Services Committee, on the Veteran Affairs Committee, and the Small Business Committee, all committees that have a, uh, that have a direct impact on this area, both in terms of veterans' issues and on the military. Since he's won, he's fashioned himself as sort of a moderate in, the con in Congress. He voted for the stimulus plan in early 2009, but he voted against the Democratic health care plan. And he also voted against what's been known as a cap-and-trade environmental legislation. He voted against the, the Democrats' drafted federal budget last year because he said it was too expensive. Those views are consistent on how he campaigned, but drew him uh, he, got, he drew some fire from Democrats, particularly on health care. The Republican opponent, Scott Ridgell, as I said, he's not run for office before, but he has been actively involved in the Republican Party. He is a, a very strong donor to the party. As, as, because he has the resources to do it financially, he has backed many candidates with significant contributions. Among his personal friends, beyond just politics, is the current governor of the state, uh, Bob McDonald, who campaigned for him earlier, in the, in, even in the primary. Um, Ridgell, before he could run in the general election, had to win a, fi a primary against five other candidates. He's been campaigning since a year ago. He set aside his dealerships he turned over to an executive in his company, and that's been his job essentially since then is on the campaign trail. He's also invested some of his own significant wealth, some of his own wealth in this. He has contributed more than a million dollars in either direct donations or loans to his campaign. And his staff has said that he is not going to be outspent by his opponent. You know, Terry and I started a business. We, you know, that ad we ran in the primary about coming up uh, to Virginia Beach with everything we owned in the little U-Haul trailer. That's true. Uh, came up here, had the privilege, the real privilege, uh, to go through Regent University and then start a business in a recession. 
and we laid down some solid principles, I think, in our business of leadership by example. I started parking way out in the, the gravel parking lot just as a way of, to show leadership by example, you know, kind of set a servant mindset. And that was the same principle that I learned in 1978 at Paris Island, that little resort off uh, the coast of South Carolina. It's all inclusive. You get off the bus, <laughs> they got it all planned for you the next three months. Rigel is a uh, conservative, he both economically and on social issues. He opposes the health care plan. He's talked about he would join efforts to try and uh, repeal it if he's elected. He wants to loosen business regulations. He's very much pro. Uh, he, he would like to have the business community un unleashed from a lot of regulations. He feels that would help the economy grow. He wants to repeal. Um, he wants to lower taxes, particularly taxes on capital gains. Um, like Nye, he speaks, he's a very strong supporter of the military, very strong supporter of veterans' issues, which in this district you must be, you, no matter whether you're Democrat or Republican. The third candidate is Kenny Golden. Kenny Golden had started out this election as a Republican. He, ran, he was running in the primary, which was last June, but dropped out months earlier uh, to run as an independent candidate. Before he dropped out, before he was even a candidate, he'd been active in the local Republican Party. He had been at one point head of the Virginia Beach branch of the Republican Party. As an independent candidate, he's, he's running on his service record. He's a, a decades of service in the, in the U.S. Navy, and he's been very active in local politics, knows a lot of people. He doesn't have a lot of campaign funds, but he is very actively campaigning, and he has an uh, a group of people are working pretty hard for him. While he doesn't have the funds, he's, he is running full-time for the office. He says he doesn't want to be a spoiler. He wants to win. Uh, Kenny Golden has, uh, by stepping away from the Republican Party, has um, upset some Republicans who feel that he shouldn't be doing this. He should back their candidate. But by the same token, he has his own supporters, and many of whom are Republicans, who feel like he has the right to run. Uh, to show I'm an ex-Republican, I still have, this is the last vestiges of the Republican Party, and I kept this because this is a uh, Republican symbol from South Africa. They, uh, my friends from South Africa brought me back this, and uh, so I, this is the only thing I, only vestige I kept. And I did keep one of these, which is the poster we had made up for uh, McCain and Palin in 2008, and uh, these were made up for a dollar apiece. We had uh, 1,500 of them made up, and they went in a couple of hours. They were gone. And we actually won for uh, McCain and Palin here in Virginia Beach. So that's all I keep. Both parties, depending on how this election goes, would perceive it as a message about President Obama, because President Obama carried this, this district during his campaign, and it's his policies that are drawn in the middle of this debate. Even though, for example, uh, Glenn Nye did not vote for the health care bill, people on, on the Republican side are campaigning against it and want to use that against him, or not his, so much his vote, but the legislation itself. So in some ways, it's viewed as a referendum on the President's policies. So as, as this election turns out, it may say something about Obama's chances in Virginia in 2012. C-SPAN's local content vehicles are traveling the country, visiting communities and congressional districts as we look at some of the most closely contested House races leading up to this November's midterm elections. For more information, go to cspan.org slash lcv.